Hey there. Believe it or not, there's a single question many people ask me. And uh, yeah, that's not what I would normally expect. I mean, it's not a complicated topic. So the question is, please, can you help me enabling SSH on my freshly installed uh, headless Raspberry Pi server? And you would think that uh, this sounds easy, right? Turns out there can be problems. So I thought to myself, okay, let's help these people and let's make a video about troubleshooting SSH on your freshly installed Raspberry Pi server. So here we go. But before we continue, if you are new to the channel, my name is Laszlo Merza and this channel deals with home automation, home networking, and sometimes with related stuff like DIY electrics and even a little bit of 3D printing. Anyway, let's continue with today's topic. So let's start the fun with uh, Ubuntu 20. So the drill is pretty much the usual. You just download the ISO file, use your favorite tool to burn it onto an SD card, and then we get to the configuration part. So this burning part will take you a few minutes and then we are starting to edit files. So in case of Ubuntu 20, you will need to edit three files, network config, you will need to create a new file called SSH without any extension and uh, you will have to edit a file called uh, user data. So uh, instead of uh, editing these every time I install a Raspberry Pi, I just casually copied these uh, onto my hard drive, edited, edited them there and then I'm just copying them to the Raspberry Pi every time I do an installation. But anyway, let's get to the contents of the files. So by default network config uh, is uh, comes with uh, Ethernet enabled and Wi-Fi disabled. So this part is uh, commented out. But it has to look like this. So you just remove uh, pretty much most of the stuff there and leaving these sections Wi-Fi, WLAN 0, yes you need DHCP, optional true means um, it won't block the boot access point this is where you configure your Wi-Fi access and this is your uh, Wi-Fi SSID and of course I mean this is mine and yeah you need your password which is not this one of course SSH this is just a zero byte empty file we just have to create it have to have there on the root of the uh, boot partition of the SD card and then user data. So this contains a bunch of stuff we don't care really care about right now. Yeah, you need to make sure that uh, password authentication is enabled. Right now we are doing the simplest way. So we just want to have a username and a password to log in. And actually this will be the username, the default username and default password. So uh, the default user will be called Ubuntu and the default password is also Ubuntu but uh, since expert is set to true uh, it will uh, ask you to change the password immediately after the first login. This is pretty much the standard content of the file but uh, it might worth checking out. This is however something you need to add. So during the first boot uh, the Raspberry Pi uh, will not boo, will not uh, enable Wi-Fi, and for whatever reason, I'm not hundred percent sure about, about what's going on in the background. You will just need to have a reboot. Probably it has to do something with first run initialization. So anyway, these two lines will instruct the Raspberry Pi to reboot after uh, the initial uh, initialization is complete. And pretty much that's it. So you just edit these files and on either on the SD card or on the hard drive like I do and uh, override the contents of the existing files on the, on the SD card and yeah, create a new SSH file. So after you have that, you just uh, unmount the SD card from your PC and uh, insert it into the Raspberry Pi. It will boot for you uh, actually, because of this reboot and initial initialization, it will take a couple of minutes, so 
just grab a coffee or something and when you come back you will be able to log in with uh, the user called Ubuntu and with the password Ubuntu and of course you will have to change it also uh, don't worry uh, after changing the password it will immediately disconnect you you will just have to log in again that's normal anyway uh, let's see this in practice so let me just copy those files to the SD card and boot the Raspberry Pi from the SD card so this will also be a headless installation. I'm just uh, streaming the HDMI uh, output of the Raspberry Pi uh, into a video file on my PC. I'm pretty much recording it. So it's like a headless installation, but we will see what's going on under the hood. So for the first glimpse, doesn't really seem to be anything special happening here. So just a normal Raspberry Pi boot screen, but then uh, let's wait. So we have this table here and you can see WLAN 0, network interface, up, false, which means the Wi-Fi is not running. And of course, as you will see, the boot sequence completes this way, which means that whenever we get to the first uh, login screen, we still don't have the Wi-Fi. And this is where you should just wait. And let's see what happens next. So as you can see, seemingly the process just sits on the login screen. However, in the background, uh, cloud init is still taking place. And uh, that reboot we have configured is still not yet completed. So this will take like a couple of seconds or even a minute, maybe two. It really depends on your Raspberry Pi model and whatnot. But eventually you will see that it's rebooting. To avoid making the video unnecessarily long, I decided to cut away and fast forward most of this uh, second boot process. But the point is, you will see a table identical to the previous one, except now it shows that the Wi-Fi is on. Other than that, the boot process will complete somewhat faster than the first time, and in the end it will even say that uh, uh, cloud init has completed. So what's left for us is to try SSH. Finally, as you can see, SSH connection is working. So during the first login you have to change your password because we marked it as expired, but other than that, well, we are done. Now let's see what happens in case of Raspberry Pi OS. So in case of Raspberry Pi OS, uh, the whole thing starts with making sure that you download the right operating system. So in case of Raspberry Pi OS, it's not called server or something like that, but it's called Raspberry Pi OS Lite. Uh, and by Lite, they mean it doesn't contain a desktop uh, environment. So you just go to Raspberry Pi org, then software, Raspberry Pi OS, and you scroll down and you will see that Raspberry Pi OS Lite, that is what you need. So you just do the usual thing, download the image file, which is uh, zipped in this case and use your favorite tool to write onto the SD card. So let's skip to the configuration part. After the image is ready, you will have to add two files to the boot partition of the SD card. So these are the two files. Just in case, just like in case of uh, Ubuntu 20, uh, you need a file called SSH without any contents. So this is just a zero byte file. But then the second file is uh, totally different. So it should be named like this, wpa underscore supplicant.conf. And um, this uh, is basically your Wi-Fi configuration. So you have to change your country code here. Then you need to add your SSID and you need to add your password. Pretty much this is it. So once again, I created these two files on my hard drive. I'm, uh, I will change this to my proper network name, to my password, and then I will just copy these files to the boot partition of the SD card. I mean, literally the partition named boot. Anyway, let me do that. And uh, like last time with Ubuntu, let me boot the Pi with this uh, prepared SD card.
So as you can see, in case of Raspberry Pi OS, things are much faster and simpler than with Ubuntu. So immediately after the first boot, you can sign on uh, remotely via SSH. But sadly, because um, we don't have cloud in it, you cannot change the default username and password and settings like that. So you will have just uh, always use the default two uh, settings. So the username is Pi and the password is Raspberry. And boom, there we go. So at this point, you have to change uh, either the password or create a totally new user. But uh, the point is mission accomplished. We have uh, SSH access. So before closing the video, um, you might want to ask why I uh, included Raspberry Pi OS in the video in the first place, because uh, yeah, it's much simpler and uh, cannot really go wrong. So yes. It's, uh, if you cannot connect my SSH, it's either your Wi-Fi settings or you uh, forgot to create the file called SSH. But this is pretty much that can go wrong with uh, the Raspberry Pi OS version. So I included it in the video for more like a comparison and not for actual uh, troubleshooting. So finally, before closing the video, there's one thing I would like to share because I really, really like it about Transfer by OS when it comes to troubleshooting SSH. So let's assume that you have uh, messed up your configuration somehow. In this case with Ubuntu you have to re-image your SD card um, but uh, in case of Raspberry Pi OS you just unplug the card from the Raspberry Pi, uh, mount it to your PC and you add those two files, the supplicant conf and the SSH files uh, again. And after replugging the card into the Pi and rebooting it again, voila, it will restart the initialization process. This is quite neat. So finally, a couple of closing thoughts, or more like questions. So from time to time I'm getting questions about Raspberry Pis and security and uh, VPNs and other related stuff. And I thought to myself, okay, let's make videos about those. So if you have any questions related, using the comment section of this video is the best idea. So feel free to ask and I will try to provide an answer in the form of a video later on, of course. Anyway, it's really time to close this video now. So I really hope it uh, helped you, you enjoyed it. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, uh, please consider subscribing. It helps me a lot and um, yeah. I really hope to see you next time, next week, with another video. Bye. You're still here. That's good, because that means you kind of liked my video. If so, feel free to check out these other videos too. And uh, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. That helps me a lot. And uh, yeah, if you click the bell button, you will get also notified about new videos.